right now, basic exponents. Okay, you've got videos, videos. We could watch that if we wanted to. We're going to have one, two, three, four different topics that we're working on. So let's get one. I am going to assume you know about exponents and move on from there. No, I'm not, because there is something that you need to know. So let's work on that. No, I don't want to work on 666. No, no. How about 9999? That sounds good. So, I'm going to get a line. Put it there. Okay. And I'm going to look at 9 times 9 times 9 times 9. And we're not being asked to find the answer. We're being asked to write this in exponential, kind of a long word there, exponential notation. What that means is, notice that all of these numbers are 9. So, to write that in exponential notation, I would write it as a 9. That's called the base. And then, up here, I would write the number of times 9 is multiplied by itself. 9 to the 4th power. 9 is called the base. 4 is called the exponent. Now the next problem, ugh. the next problem has fractions. You've got 16 over 9 times 16 over 9, uh, 19 rather, 16 over 19 times 16 over 19 times 16 over 19 times 16 over 19, and it says write in exponential notation which means answer A, which is 65,536 over 130,321 is wrong. Okay, all of these are wrong except C. Now, why is that? Because, because, 16 over 9 teen, times 16 over 19 times 16 over 19 times 16 over 19. These numbers are all the same and they're being multiplied by themselves. Uh, well, 16 over 19 is being multiplied by itself four times. That means 16 over 19 is the base, and the number of times it's multiplied by itself is the exponent. So that is the only correct answer in our multiple choice. This is called Exponential notation. Notation means writing. Exponential means it has an exponent. All right, what else do we have? Ah, yeah. All right, we have a number 20. And it's raised to the zero power and we're being asked what it equals. 
Well, I'll tell you. Any number raised to, or I should say any positive number, but that's not true because if I had negative 20 in parentheses raised to the zero power, I would also have one. Any number raised to the zero power is one. Now, it just so happens that if I had negative 20 raised to the zero power with no parentheses, it would be a completely different number. Because here, the negative sign is grouped with the 20, making this the number negative 20. But here, when there are no parentheses, this is the number 20 being raised to the zero power that has a negative sign in front of it. So this is going to be negative one. 20 to the zero power is one, and the negative sign is in front of it. Whereas if you had used parentheses, then this whole thing would have been raised to the zero power, which would just mean your answer is one. Okay. Now, that's not what I want. What do I want? I want this. Okay. Square root of 13. The square root of 13 is a number raised to the zero power. It's one. Now here's a fraction, six sevenths. The whole thing is being raised to the one power. Any number raised to the one power is just itself, six sevenths. Okay. Now we're going to move on to those rules of exponents. So let's do it. We're starting out with multiplication. So this multiplication of two like that means they're alike, bases is going to give me the power rule. Of exponents. Let me make a little circle around that. The power rule of exponents. So here we have a base five raised to the seventh power. I'm multiplying by base five raised to the eighth power. The bases are alike. They're the same. So, the answer is 5 raised to the 7 plus 8 power. And over here, A is the right answer. You have the base 5 raised to the 7 plus 8 power. Of course, it's not asking for it, but normally, you would add seven plus eight. Seven plus eight would be 15. So that would be five to the 15th. 
the power rule for exponents or of exponents. Here we've got another one just like it. 8 to the second power times 8 to the third power equals 8 to the 2 plus 3 equals 8 to the fifth power. And then again, now we have division. Of two, well, I should just say of like bases. It's not my eraser. Here's my eraser. So division of like bases. That's going to give us, oops, I made a mistake. Everybody go backwards in your notes. I said that the multiplication of two like bases gave rise to the power rule. It doesn't. It starts with a P. It's the product rule. The hiccups. I hate it when that happens. It's so embarrassing. Okay, anyway, you have the division of like bases here. And it's going to be 6 to the 7th power <coughs> divided by 6 to the 5th power. We want the quotient rule because when you divide, you get a quotient. Quotient rule of exponents. Well, they have like bases. These exponents have like bases. That means I write the exponent once. But I'm going to subtract because it's division. If I add because of multiplication, I subtract because of division. 7 minus 5. This is 6 to the 7 minus 5. I should move it over here. 6 to the 7 minus 5, and that's going to be 6 to the 2. And let's see what the... Yeah, no, they're not asking you to write this, though. So what they're asking you for is this. There, right there, 5 to the 7 minus 8. I just clicked on it so it changed numbers. But here's 6 to the 7 minus 5, which is good. 6 to the 7 minus 5, I'm back to where I started. However, I got in the wrong place. There you go, fantastic. So now, we have a puzzle.
Actually, I shouldn't put that there though, because we're still using the quotient rule. So I'll just leave it here. Here's the problem right here. Divide and simplify. Six. Six. Why is it doing that to me? I am being persecuted. I'll teach it. OK. I am just going to copy it. How about that? Let me erase this. And click there because I have to flatten it. OK. Now notice these are this this problem is actually three different problems. You have six divided by negative three times x to the eight over x to the two times z to the five over z. And a z by itself is z to the one power. Well, I know that six divided by three is two. Well, six divided by negative three would be negative two. But remember, you can always put numbers in your calculator. Here, because of the quotient rule, notice the bases are the same. I'll have x to the 8 minus 2. And then I'll have z to the 5 minus 1. So our answer is negative 2, x to the 6th, z to the 4. Right there. X and X make their own fraction. Z and Z make their own fraction. And the numbers, a number over a number, that they make their own fraction. And then you use the rules of exponents on the X's and Z's, but not on the numbers, you just divide. All right, now, now we're going to work on the power rule. You have a base raised to a power, raised to a power again. That's how you know it. You have one base raised to a power. And then raise to a power again. This is the power rule for sure. 
product and power both start with a P. It's true. So the brain has to work a little harder. Power rule of exponents. So here's our problem. 9 raised to the second power raised to the ninth power. And we're being asked to write our, this time, the instructions are underneath the answer box. Simplify your answer. Type exponential notation using positive exponents. OK. When I have a base raised to a power and raised to a power again, I multiply the powers. So that'll be 9 to the 18th power because 2 times 9 is 18. And that's your answer. Now it gets a little more dicey. When we do this, in parentheses, we've got five, x to the fifth, y to the third, squared. Now, the first thing I want to point out is that five is raised to the one power. If you don't see a power, if you don't see an exponent, then the exponent is 1. 2 is going to multiply that exponent, the 1. It's going to multiply the 5. It's going to multiply the 3, so that I have 5 to the 1 times 2 times x to the 5 times 2 times y to the 3 times 2. And that will give us. Where are you, kitty, kitty, kitty? Here I am. We have a new kitten. Yes, we have a new kitten. Yes, yes, yes. OK, that will be 5 to the 1 times 2. That'll be 5 to the 2. X to the, ah, uh, I mean 5 to the 1 times 2 is 5 to the 2. X to the 5 times 2 is X to the 10. And Y to the 3 times 2 is 6. That's all there is to it. 